Since we were kids, we've been told that the distance between Mars and Earth is hundreds of millions of kilometers of away. But what if I told you Mars-like landscape is much closer than we think? Nearly 300 years ago, an endless series of volcanoes shook the Earth. Historically, it was one of the longest lasting eruptions on record. It lasted for six years, leaving almost a quarter of Lanzarote under a thick blanket of lava and ash. It ended up creating this otherworldly landscape that is known today as the Timanfaya National Park. There are a few ways you can explore the Timanfaya National Park. The first one is the most touristy. As it's strictly forbidden to walk inside the national parks, the most convenient way to see it is by taking a 40 minute bus tour through its Mars like landscapes. The only big disadvantage to this is it's not allowed to leave the bus ever at all. But still very beautiful. Quick kilometers is of volcanic origin. But the good news, you can visit the most famous restaurant in all of Lanzarote. This is what I call a restaurant with a view, volcanic view. But the most interesting feature here is the volcanic grill known as El Diablo. So it's kind of like a deep well over which they cook chicken, sometimes fish and vegetables. How hot? 100, 200, 200 feet. Uh-huh. And inside? Uh, 8 meters. 8 meters deep. That's how hot. you mentioned like Hell's Kitchen. Hell's Kitchen, yes. Yeah. Hell's Kitchen. <laughs> they prepare more entertainment for its visitors with demonstrations of various volcanic activities such as burning vegetation or seeing the gazers. But for more authentic experience, can hike the nearby volcanoes that are just as spectacular. This landscape is truly out of this world. It's just so hard to comprehend that a third of this island was buried under the layer of frozen lava. Yeah, and that was like an endless lava desert. Nothing around you, nothing green around you, just endless lava fields and dust. After you spend a few hours in this volcanic land, you begin to wonder, is it possible to grow anything in this volcanic soil? Not to forget to mention, it rarely ever rains here. It is hot and the wind is quite strong all the time. That is why the landscapes of Liguria is one of Lanzarote's biggest surprises. It is a large area covered by little fragments of black volcanic rock that were flung out during the volcano eruption. And now it's being used by Lanzarote farmers to grow vineyards that produce wine. You look like a local. <laughs> so the locals came up with an interesting idea. They built some kind of crater, small craters from the stones that protect the grape from the wind. And the moisture in the morning is concentrated and then flows directly to the roots of the grapes. Look what I found, what they grow in a crater. Tomatoes in a wine <laughs> grape. Smells so good, babe. So delicious actually. Juicy? Uh-huh, it's like yeah. lots of water, lots of sun. Where did they get water from? No idea, but it's so <laughs> delicious. And this is their final product. You saw those craters, how big they are, how much work each grape takes. And look how many they filled out. And it's probably not even all of them here. So grab a couple of white wines to taste and the aroma is so strong and so delicious. Mm. It's definitely sweet and young. It's definitely one of the most unique wines and the most unique vineyards you can ever try. But besides the vineyards, the inheritance of the islands always wish to have their own garden. So they decided to do it from the most unpretentious plants on earth, cactus. And here you can find all types of cactuses. Chubby cactus. Bush Khalifa type of cactus. One that looks like corn and hundreds of hundreds of other types of cactus. But the most interesting thing to do here is to taste the cactus. It is made from the most popular cactus in Lanzarote, the prickly pear. It also has potatoes, wheat, and onion inside. It's very dry, just like a cactus, but it's not poking, so that's the good part. 
tastes so-so, but it's the best cactus I've ever had in my life, so <laughs> definitely worth a try for at least once in your life. But is there really no greenery here? There's only one way to find out. Here we are uh, <laughs> in Tennessee. <laughs> It's so crazy, <sighs> floating like a bird, like a drone, above the endless lava fields. So much adrenaline, especially going by the cliffs. So close and so fast. <laughs> Too many emotions. Too much for one day. It's crazy. See you tomorrow. So today is our second day in Lanzarote and we've prepared even more interesting things for you to do. But first we decided to grab some coffee at the highest building on the island. The Arecibo Grand Hotel, which has a panoramic cafe on its top floor with an incredible view of the city. And maybe the 15th floor doesn't sound very impressive for you, but it's indeed the highest building on the island. And the point is that the, the cities are a little bit different here. You won't find any pompous Spanish cathedrals here or fancy Gaudi houses. The architecture is designed to blend in with the surrounding landscapes. There's even a rule here that doesn't allow anybody to build houses bigger than the palm trees, not to interfere with nature. And while you're driving around the island, you'll notice that there's no big posters or billboards anywhere on the island. And if I had to describe Lanzarote in just a few words, I would say alien and harmony. Harmony with nature. And here we are on our first stop for the day. El Lago Verde, or the Green Lake, is a volcanic crater lake which is known for its distinctive green color and is definitely one of the most Instagrammable spots here on the island. And our next stop is one of a kind geological wonders of Lanzarote. Think of it as an underground paradise that you never knew existed. This place formed from a volcanic eruption which created a massive underground tunnel and when the roof of the tunnel collapsed it formed a series of natural caves and pools of crystal clear waters. You can spot little tiny crabs. They're very unique to the island. They're about one centimeter tall. So little and so cute. Blind They're white, crabs. blind crabs. This place also features an auditorium, a concert hall inside the natural cave. And it can fit up to 600 people and it's famous for the acoustics of the caves. So very often you can witness the concerts. The concerts inside the natural cave. The combination of the architectural style of Cesar Manrique and the natural caves is a true wonder. I don't think you'll find this anywhere else in the world. Next to one attraction, you'll find another attraction, which is the most breathtaking viewpoint in Lanzarote, Mirador del Rio. It used to be an old military base from which a local artist, Cesar Manrique, created a project now known as the Eyes of El Mirador. An island. <laughs> so many craters. Why is it be so peaceful in that island? This is the distinctive feature of Lanzarote. They could build a massive viewpoint with a lot of buildings selling souvenirs, but no. They choose to blend everything and it seems like their viewpoint is created by nature. And that is what I really love about this island. And if you'd like a less touristic viewpoint, head to our next recommendation, which offers you the best views of the Atlantic Ocean and this island from 600 meter cliffs. One of the best views of Lanzarote. Maybe in the world. <laughs> and when you start to believe that there's no better viewpoint than this, there's a secret one right underneath us.
Although the hike is a little bit sketchy and it's hard to find here the way down, but it's definitely worth it because take a look, you are in inside a volcanic cave. Such beautiful view. My legs are shaking. <laughs> Mine too. And now it's time for a very well-deserved dinner and there's no better way to start it than with papa arugadas. It is a traditional dish here of the island. Uh, it translates to wrinkled potatoes and you can find them anywhere here in the Canaries. So the reason that they're so salty is because traditionally used to use the seawater because there was not a lot of fresh water here on the island so they try to make the best out of it. Now of course they're recreating it uh, so they're going to put a lot of salt in it to make them salty and wrinkly. Potato loving country so I love it. Lithuanian. <laughs> And of course, being surrounded by the ocean, it makes sense that their delicatess will also come from the sea. Uh, these are limpets, the little tiny molluscus that are cooked with garlic, parsley, salt, olive oil, and white wine. I'm ashamed to say, but I've never tried molluscus in my life. <laughs> and I have no idea how to eat them. Slurp it, slurp it. You're yeah. making fun of me. Mm. Chewy and oily. Do you taste the wine? Mm -mm. No white wine. <laughs> more wine, please. Could, could add more, yeah. <laughs> mm. Very good. And we couldn't skip dessert, so we decided to get mousse de cofillo, which is a traditional dessert of the Canary Islands. And this one has a little bit of honey. Oh. Mm. <laughs> to describe it simply, it seems like wheat bread mixed with some kind of grain with honey on top, but it's so delicious. It sounds so simple, but believe me, if you have gofia mousse on the menu, definitely order it, definitely try it, you have to. And our last stop is dedicated to a person who made an enormous impact on this island. And Lanzarote is often called a love letter to the heart and soul of Caesar Manrique. <laughs> Now think back to all the places we showed you. They wouldn't exist without one person, Caesar Manrique. He's the one that literally created every single attraction on the island. This guy was a genius. And the attention of the artist is centered on his old house. This guy totally lived like a utopian world. It's like an apocalypse happened, earthquakes, volcanoes everywhere, and he decided to build this paradise in hell. <laughs> He's gonna live such a life that I would definitely record a Netflix TV show about him. Considering his extraordinary lifestyle, believe me, this would be one of the most entertaining TV series. What can I say? Lazaro was truly lucky to have Cesar Manrique, an artist who was able to combine art and nature and to create something truly out of this world. Maybe even better to say that he created his own world here, which for some seems unfit for life, but for locals, it is a place of endless opportunities. They learn how to cook on the volcanoes, how to turn an incredibly windy place into a surfer's paradise, and how by developing innovative farming techniques, they created a beautiful and a productive landscape, even where water is source and the soil seems infertile. And most importantly, where people have learned to blend the touristy attraction seamlessly with the island's natural terrain, showing us how we all can appreciate our planet and coexist with nature in a unique and harmonious way.